Hi, welcome to the Oliver Fetter YouTube channel. Today is an exciting day. I am wrapping up some of my VNT turbo build. And today specifically, we got two things to cover as far as relatable hardware issues that you may run into. Number one, we're gonna change out a compressor wheel on this here turbo. The compressor wheel got pretty chewed up. It looks worse than it is because I grabbed it with vice grips, but it was chewed up before that, so it did need replaced with this beautiful, freshy, brandy new one. And my intercooler piping is starting to look like absolute bag. I mean, I've cut it, used it too many times. So I have a box full of brand new intercooler piping, link in description, and I'm gonna show you how to take intercooler piping that comes in these generic kits and cut it and use it for exactly your application. Off we go. Number one, here we go. Changing out a compressor wheel is actually pretty easy, but what will make it really hard is if you try to turn it the wrong way. So right now I'm trying to tighten it, which is counterintuitive because this is normally a loosening direction. Now, if you just change the direction you're trying to loosen it to what it normally isn't, AKA righty loosey lefty tighty, there you go. Easy, easy, easy. This wheel comes right off. That wasn't too bad. And the new wheel can go right on. Now there's no particular orientation for this particular wheel. It has been balanced, so it should be fine in any given orientation. Okay, before anybody leaves me hella shit in the comments section, I understand that turbos are balanced altogether, or at least I do now because I posted a short of the same process and got absolutely flamed for it. But my options here are don't replace a broken compressor wheel, which that's not a good option. Uh, replace it with a balanced wheel, and now I don't have a totally balanced full system, or replace the whole turbo, or send it off to get balanced. Now sending a turbo to get balanced is a ridiculous amount of money, uh, and you're pretty much just better off buying a new cartridge altogether. So when I go in the future to put this turbo on my new engine, I'll probably just buy a new balanced cartridge and avoid any turbo problems that way. But in the meantime, having a replaced compressor wheel that isn't half shropped is definitely better and more balanced than having one that's literally missing material. So if you're balling on a budget, like I frequently am with this car, I would rather have a replaced compressor wheel that's at least somewhat balanced than one that isn't balanced at all. It's backwards, so here we go. Lefty tighty, very confusing. And this wheel is kind of sharp and I don't want to damage it either because they're not that strong. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab it with a rag and then try to loosen it, AKA tighten it. There we go, nice and tight. And that reverse thread is just so when this thing's spinning ridiculously fast, it actually is turning that nut on tighter and not loosening it. There we go, step one is looking quite swell. I'm gonna put the rest of this turbo back together. Okay, so right now I'm going to set our minimum vane position. So this is the actuator that's gonna move it and right here is fully open and right there is fully closed. And I have a few turns in, so let's go one, two, three, four. So we got some threads, so we're pretty much fully closed. Now, I don't ever want the turbo to be fully, fully closed because that's too much. I mean, it's like shut off, like the engine probably wouldn't run well. So we probably want it about there. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this in a few. One, two, three. So that's almost all the way in. That's definitely a little bit open. And I'm gonna go check that this orientation of the cold side is appropriate for the hot side in the car. And it's always good to do one final check. Does it spin and not rub? Yes, we are good there. Minimal shaft play. Okay, so this is my old intake piping. As you can see, it's pretty scratched up and I used about four segments to get from there to there with a bunch of couplers. And so that has to be inherently in inefficient on some level. So, new piping. Still have to get from here to there. Uh, and so far it's looking like first section should be this, this long tube 
and then I think I'm just gonna use another straight section over here about okay so I got this first section of pipe in that looks pretty good you can see where I'm going I'm going it right here so I just need to measure another straight section I'm not too concerned about this slight angle I think the boost coupler will take that up so quick measure will tell us what we need to know yeah definitely an 8 inch piece of pipe will do quite nicely so I'm gonna take this here straight section I'm gonna measure eight inches and I'm gonna cut it with my angle grinder and then clean it out. Okay, so here's my cut down tube, nothing fancy. I chopped with the angle grinder, it didn't come out quite straight, but it doesn't matter. Uh, I used to add the rib to it, as you can kind of see on this one. Turns out you can take a pair of wire stripping pliers and cut off the tip and it makes this perfect bulge. But I actually have had the experience that you don't always need it. I've never blown boost coupler so for now I'm gonna be lazy mainly because I can't find those pliers that I have uh, and I'm just gonna put a coupler on it and call it good look at that it's looking good now uh, word of caution even though your tubes are brand new they may or may not be clean inside there's all kinds of just Ugh. dirt in there so even this tube I just put on I definitely need to take a second to clean Okay, pipe number two is cut to size, and go ahead and install. There we go, that's pretty close. I think again, a straight coupler will do. So there's our test fit of our second pipe. I need to add some sensors to this one, uh, namely a pressure sensor, and then I gotta add my boost. Well, both are boost pressure sensors, but I gotta add where my boost T was, which is over here, back to over here, and retap it for a sensor. All right, that one's a little too short. We're gonna go a bit longer. So I got this pipe in and clean. This one's fine. Now I'm working on my air filter. This isn't really the final version, though it's actually looking pretty good. I remember someone commenting a while ago, like, hey, your uh, air filter setup really doesn't take in cold air. And I was like, yep, you're right. So. We're trying to address that a little bit right now. Maybe not completely, but at least get this looking decent. Okay, we now have a filtered air intake that actually will probably get cold air that goes down to the turbo. Turbo shoots it back to the intercooler, comes around, goes in. I'm gonna throw two ports in here and button some things up. And then me and Dave are actually gonna be able to test this today, which is super exciting. This is gonna be our intake pressure sensor. And right there is going to be my mechanical boost gauge. So we're going to get a side-by-side -side comparison so we know we're doing it right. Now we have two pressure ports, so I'm going to throw the pipe back in. Just ran our new boost line. I'm going to have to replace this sooner than later because I know for a fact this kind of hose melts, especially in this car, but for now it'll get us by. Okie dokie, I almost forgot to reconnect the turbo oil drain, but I didn't. <laughs> uh, we are now wired up, we got a drive pressure sensor, we got a boost pressure sensor, we're measuring boost pressure at the same place, we got new intercooler piping, we got a new compressor wheel, our oil feed line is connected and otherwise all the usual suspect sensors are connected. Fresh air filter. All we gotta do is plug this thing into the Arduino and check out the code Dave's been working on and see if this thing functions like we expect it to. <laughs> all right, so me and Dave, mainly Dave, <laughs> has the code working on this Arduino such that we should be seeing appropriate movements out of our linear actuator on the turbo that controls the vanes based on what pressure this sees. Now our fail-safe test we're going to do here first is we're actually, we have a potentiometer, which is just a fancy way to say, variable resistance hooked up, that is simulating what the sensors are putting out. So we're going to pretend that this is our boost pressure and drive pressure and they're equal for some reason, but we're going to hook up our linear actuator for starters and then we're gonna adjust what the pressure is and we're gonna make sure the actuator is operating correctly with the car off before we hook it up to the sensors and run everything. In front of you, there are three potentiometers and we're connected currently to the linear actuator that's on the turbo in the car. So 
This one without a cap over here is our fake boost pressure and drive pressure simulator. It changes them simultaneously, which corresponds to the two 11 numbers you're seeing right there. So if you watch, I am simulating now that we have one PSI, nine PSI, 17 PSI. And you can hear in the background that the linear actuator is actually doing its thing. And now over here we have boost pressure. So we have a max of 25 and I can set it what our max is gonna be with this knob. So right now we're gonna start off with something conservative, like nine would be great. And we're gonna set our drive pressure somewhere lower as well. Probably also like seven would be great. And now, as you see, it works and the car works. All right, we're gonna go ahead and uh, fire this thing up and just play with it at idle a little bit. And then we're gonna hook up the sensors and take it for a drive. Right now, we're just checking that my mechanic work actually works. Closing right now. It's full closed on the turbo. We got zero psi drive. Uh, shit. Zero psi boost. Zero psi drive. Nice. We got a one on here because it shows negative at those low voltages. And then we've got our limit set low at seven psi on the drive and the boost. So we're gonna check this thing out. Yeah. Yeah. Tuning is the next session. Hell yeah. <laughs> That's way more fun. Let's go. That is way uh, more fun. Well, all right. Well, Dave had to go, but I managed to get this thing all taped to the dashboard. There we are. And uh, it's freaking sweet. So this is drive pressure adjustment and this is boost pressure adjustment. If you watch here, right now my drive pressure limit, I can turn it up. So right now it's 10 PSI. And now if I go over here with the mains all the way closed, you can see we build quite a bit of pressure. And now if I go over here and turn it back down, I'm now asking for PSI and look what we get. Totally works. Check that out. Slick. So I think I'm gonna go for another test drive and we'll try out like six PSI a drive and like 15 pounds. No, we'll start low on the boost too. We'll go 10 pounds of boost, five pounds of drive.
thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'm super excited about this in general. It seems like there's definitely a lot left to do tuning wise. Um, today I took it for a few more test drives and there is a bit of a bug with which drive or boost pressure gets the priority with picking what the turbo does because it kind of gets hung up and has high drive pressure without a lot of boost. But that should be something as simple as a coating fix. On the bright side, I installed all these new pipes and I installed a bunch of wiring and sensors and none of them have melted yet, which is honestly insane. So we're off to a ripping start on this build. I hope you learned something about turbos and I hope you learned something about doing piping, mainly that's not that hard. You buy the pipes with the clamps and the couplers, you measure, you cut, and you put it together. It takes a little bit of patience to organize the pipes. I think I need to spend a little bit more time over here. I'm not super satisfied with how the air filter and stuff looks, but air filter's in a great place. I mean, it's still cold while stuff over here is pretty warm, so that's excellent. Thank you so much for watching. This is the Oliver Federer YouTube channel. I appreciate you. Hope you have a good day out there.